Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. All right. Welcome to the week, Change Gang. Super excited to be here with Derek, one of my favorite people. Derek Heron is here. And uh, he just, you know, he's a nice Scottish guy. And who doesn't love to sit and listen to a nice Scottish guy? Thanks for being here, Derek. Hiya. Good to be here. (laughs) So I'm so glad that we get to talk today. We're going to dive into a super fun thing. I think it's pretty fun. And uh, having experienced it, obviously, with you too, I think it's fun to share with people and just kind of talk about. I've heard the word. We're going to talk about mindscaping today. And I've heard the word, but people use it in different ways. So tell me what we're going to be, how you use it, what we're going to be talking about today in terms of mindscaping. Yeah, sure. So mindscaping is an incredibly powerful tool uh, and really it's changing people's maps. So if people have a, people have a, a thing they want to achieve and this can be anything from weight loss to not be nervous at a meeting or they might have um, some kind of blockage in their life that they just can't seem to, to break through. What we do is we, we, alter the way that that journey is mapped out and we try to remove the blocks and make things more positive and more inviting. So we explore and ecologically landscape the internal the internal architecture. And what I mean by that is we, we basically, we change the way the journey is mapped out and it all happens in subconscious. That's pretty much it. Yeah, and well, <laughs> you, know, you talk about the map, and it's kind of a little bit yes. of, our, of, the, of the mind map for that particular thing that yes. your subconscious creates. So it's not necessarily the same map for everything that you're talking about, Absolutely. even with the same person. Yes, yeah. I mean, every single map is different, and we're very specific. So when we do <clears throat> when we do a mindscape, we ask the the conscious mind to supply the map specifically for that goal. That's the, the, the crux of it. So we don't want anything else. We don't want, you know, superfilious stuff. We just want what we need to know. What's it all about? What's that journey? And what are the blocks? What is there in front of us? And and we ask the subconscious to just present that map for that goal. And that's it. That's all we want. Right. And that, and just to clarify, cause you kind of, you said conscious and subconscious. We're talking to the subconscious, right? Yeah. There, there's no hypnosis required for this, for, for the mindscaping. But what we do ask is we ask the unconscious mind to present the map for us. All right. Okay. Do you yeah. ever have people that struggle with that, that struggle with coming up with something? And surprisingly, no, no. Um, occasionally, with people who have have aphantasia, they struggle a little bit um, with that because obviously, again, it's a very visual thing. So people with aphantasia tr- struggle with that internal visualization, and sometimes it's maybe not the best approach for someone with aphantasia because it's so visual based. But even then, they can get a sense. You know, there's that language that you can use with people of aphantasia, that they can get a sense of this. They can get a sense of what's perhaps in front of them. You'll know what I mean by that, but having done a, a mindscape. So, yes, but apart from that, everyone can do this. Everyone that can visualize in their heads, see in their mind's eye, can do this, and it will work for them. Right. And so one of the, and, and it is, it's actually kind of fun. It was, 
interesting to me when you because when you go in in the beginning you ask them to create this map and sure. and so your brain is kind of playing this out in whatever way that it wants to and then it's like okay now we're gonna make that map 3d and it almost yeah. reminded me i don't know if you watch have ever watched game of thrones but you yes. know the map kind of comes into play in the beginning <laughs> and you see all yes. these 3d things and i was like oh that's what's happening so it, yes. it was fun it was a bit of fun but I had no idea going into it, besides the subject that we talked about during during that, sure. what to expect or why any of it was coming up and the ways that you kind of led me into what was coming up in the beginning and what was behind me and, and then mm. the process of kind of changing some things. And then we talked a little bit about it afterwards. And I, so it was like, oh, okay, I get that now. I understand. And some of the things that I thought and was processing in my mind made more sense when we talked a little bit about that. Because I think you're asking, and maybe that's just me, I probably didn't give you as much detail as maybe some people do, but there's a lot going on in my mind in that process. But you're picking out some important parts of that and kind of guiding me yeah it wasn't just about what i saw it was about what i felt yes. why did you do that why did you pick up okay from... so what happens is when when we create we ask the unconscious mind to create a map and as you say we, we then ask it to render everything in 3d so we find that the, the map presents both um natural uh, natural structures and more manufactured structures in front of us and behind us and to the sides and for me so th these are metaphor these are symbolic representations that the unconscious mind is providing now i don't know whether these structures are positive structures or negative structures so i have to ask the client how does that make you feel? So the client observes something. And I need to know, is this is this something, this symbolic thing that they can see on their map, is this a negative thing or is it a good thing? Because we really want to avoid the negative things, right? And where the negative thing provides a blockage, we want to try and work our way around or, or remove that blockage. So I need to know, is this, do we keep this or do we deal with this? And so I need to know by the client reaction, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? How does that make you feel? And that instinct, that core instinct tells me everything. And so when you do, when there's something negative does come up, I mean, that's kind of the purpose. Sure. What we're doing with the mindscape is you're creating a, a place that represents the issue. Yes. Whether it is weight loss or a block that you're having, could be a block in your business, you're not making mm -hmm. progress, something like that. Mm -hmm. Your mind is creating a representation of place that then you navigate. Yeah, it, it's creating a map. It's creating a map of the journey that you need to take or that you are taking. It's it's a live map. The map changes very slowly, albeit when you're doing a mindscape, but the map is live. For instance, I had a client today, I had a client earlier today, and I mindscaped them for weight loss. And it was very interesting because they looked at the horizon. Now, the horizon represents the goal, what they want to achieve. And interestingly enough, they saw a mountain in the horizon, and that was all. So that's not enough for me. I need to find out a little bit more. So I asked them to take binoculars and have a look at the mountain and see what else they could see. And as soon as they, in their mind, they lifted these binoculars to their eyes and they could see this little house. And that's fine, that's great, that's their goal, it's represented by a little house. Fabulous. But what was really, really interesting, because this client had come to me with weight loss and they were struggling to lose weight, they still had that, that little podgy belly and they just wanted to lose that. And they they, they couldn't. There was something just stopping them. But what they saw when they looked at this house was there was a fence all the way around the house. So that's a great metaphoric imagery. There's your blockage. There's what's stopping you. You can't get to the house because there's a fence. So what I did in this situation, I, I said, okay, what's the fence made of? And she said, it's made of wood. I said, great. 
So let's put a bubble around this fence. And within this bubble, we're going to accelerate time. We're going to accelerate time hundreds and hundreds of times faster than normal. And I said, watch as that fence weathers. Tell me what's happening to that fence as it's affected by the weather over hundreds and hundreds of years, affecting it really, really rapidly. And I said, it, it's rotting, the wood's rotting. And now it's crumbling and now it's just, it's all just dust on the ground. I said, wonderful. So what we did there was we fed back to the unconscious to remove this fence. And we did it in an ecological way. We didn't blow the fence up or set fire to the fence. We did it in a perfectly ecological way that the, the, the subconscious could understand. And we just, in order to, that fence may be representative of a learning or of a teaching or of a, a past knowledge of some sort. And so we just left a little plaque just where the, the fence went across the path. We just left a little plaque to say, there was a fence here at once. But at some point there was a fence here, but it's no longer here. And this little plaque marked where the fence was. And that just means that that, that memory, that learning, isn't destroyed completely. There's still that knowledge of that memory and whatever that fence meant. It's no longer there now, but there's just a little plaque there to remind us of what it stood for. And that's it. And that's how, so the map is, the, the map is a journey and it represents all the obstacles and all the good things as well that are on that journey and the goal. Wow. I mean, that's so cool because people don't realize it's not about sometimes you having to put words or identify or come to, to a conscious knowledge of what it is that's stopping you from achieving your, your goal, whatever that is. It can be metaphorical. It can be something because at the core of it, we do know there, there's a part of us that knows whatever it is that can put words to it, but it's often easier to, for us to just understand in that metaphor as a fence, as a whatever. I'm sure you've had other things come up. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, as something blocking the way for us to move forward. Yep. But we also innately know how to clear that. Our subconscious knows how yes. to take care of that, reprogram yes. that, do something different from this point on. Yep. And coming to that awareness, even at a metaphorical level, can make that change is what you're telling me, yeah? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So the, their internal map is a continuous feedback loop with the client's feelings, beliefs, presuppositions, judgments, fears, hopes, all of that. And by carefully sculpting the features of the map, we can literally change the client's mind. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you said, you know, that, that I've, I've had other metaphors. I had one client recently, and what was blocking him, of all things, was the Eiffel Tower. Oh. So he looked across to his future and he, the Eiffel Tower was in the way. I have no idea what that represented. And I don't need to know, right? But the fact that we, and, and all I did was I just shrunk what the client, you know, I suggested, so how can we get around the Eiffel Tower? What can you do to, to get around it? And he said, I want to shrink it. I said, well, shrink it. And so he shrunk it so he could literally just step over it, Right. And get on his way because we're using, we're using the metaphors presented to us by the unconscious. So if we, in our minds, make those changes, we know that this is anything subconscious does. It's guaranteed. That's it. That's it. Set in stone. That's if we make a change and the subconscious is cooperating with that change. We know that that's going to be deep and permanent. It's deep and long lasting change because it's been done by the subconscious mind. And so we, we, we speak its language. We see these metaphors presented to us by the unconscious and we change them and we feed back to the unconscious. This is what I want. This is my goal. This is my journey to my goal. This is in the way. Let's shrink it. Let's change it. Let's alter it. Let's, you know, remove it. 
and you're feeding back to the unconscious mind, and the unconscious goes, okay, I read your language loud and clear, you shrunk the eye of whatever, I know what the eye of whatever means, and now I know what you want. Let's move on. And I think that's something you just said is really important because you said when the subconscious is cooperating. That's the part that often people don't understand, that it's trying to do the best it can do for us. And it thinks it's doing that even when it's to our detriment, even when we're holding on to the weight, the anxiety, the frustration, whatever it is that we're not gaining the goal that we want. Because there's a part of it in there that's going, well, this is this is how we've always done it. This is what I'm supposed to do to keep you safe. But when you go in and you start communicating in this way through these metaphors, Mm -hmm. it comes to an understanding of that we need a new way. We need a new path. We need to clear things, right? So that's where the cooperation comes in. Yes. Yeah. Cool. That's so cool. I love our minds. Isn't it fascinating? (laughs) And you you can't get it wrong. This is the thing. You're using the images that the unconscious mind presented. So you can't get it wrong. As a therapist... It's giving you everything you need to know on a plate. It's showing you that whole journey on a plate, presenting it to you. There you go. We don't need to interpret stuff. We don't need to ask the client, consciously ask the client client questions. The unconscious is presenting the whole map to us. And it's just a case of we look at that map and analyze it. It's interesting the map is very spatial. We have the sky, we have the ground, and, and I'll say this tentatively, we have the underground. And so what we're looking, yeah, we have the underground occasionally, very, very seldom, but occasionally we venture underground. In psychology terms, the the sky represents the superego, the parent, the, the, the ego that, that's, that is responsible for our morality, our spirituality, our social values, right? It's the, the kind of parent ego state. And then we've got the ground that the map appears in. And that is our ego. That's our ego. That represents our ego. The, the I, the sense of I, the I am, the, the reality, the rational part of our mind, I guess. And then the lower ground, which we very, very rarely venture in any mindscape, that's the id. If you if you know your psychology terms, that's the id. That's the the instinct stuff, the urges, the subconscious, the impulse, the primary processes. That's that sort of thing. And a very, very on the very odd occasion, you might find in the the mindscape that there is a portal or a tunnel down leading downwards in one instance there's the, the entrance to the subway station something like that or a rabbit hole and if you think of Alice in Wonderland there are so many psychological metaphors in Alice in Wonderland right and Alice falls down this rabbit hole and that says it all That's what the mind, that's what the mindscape does. It presents this map of the the superego, the ego, and the id in a map. Well, talking about the the underground, I mean, I'm thinking that might represent something a little darker, a little more difficult. It most certainly is darker. It's where all the inner demons are. It's, you know, if you build up a good rapport with the subconscious, then... Occasionally, it might just present a little journey below ground. But you know what? With any mindscape, it's constantly with the client. How does that make you feel? And the client might say, I want to go down there. Client might say, "Mm, not sure about that. Okay, maybe we'll just stay on the surface. (laughs) All right. If the client decides to go down there, it is. It's deep stuff. It's heavy stuff. And so you can make sure the client's going to be safe. And any time the client can decide, hey, this is just too scary or this, I feel bad about this. Again, how does that make you feel? All right. Always check in with your client. The the symbology that they see, how does it make you feel? And you can just say, okay, it makes you feel bad. Let's not go down there. Maybe we'll leave that for another day. 
if the subconscious presents that as something that they think is of value, but ultimately it's, is the client ready to face whatever is down there? Now that's up to the client. But sometimes it's nice that the subconscious feels safe enough to present that. Okay. If it was easy peasy stuff, if it was nothing and frivolous, it would appear in the map. It would appear on the surface. Right? But if it's deep and heavy, then it's <laughs> underground. And have you, and you had know, somebody yeah. go down underground, walk them through that part of it? Yeah, you can walk them through and you put various safety thing mechanisms in place that will keep them safe. So you make sure that there's an imaginary line that they can take with them. So they might be tethered to the, you know, the above ground and they can take a, they're tied to a rope that feeds out continuously as they go underground. So even if it's dark, they can easily find their way back up to the surface. And I assume, though, at, that even if it is dark, even if it is something, it's going to once again be metaphorical. In Absolutely. The... Yes. So it's not going to go down and bring this tragedy that somehow no, happened. No, 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 no. Absolutely. No, you, you, you just, it's the unconscious invitation to face your fear, really, right? It's just that kind of thing. But not everyone wants to do that. Not everyone's ready to do that. You can arm them with protective amulets. You can ar arm them with weapons that will destroy anything that they, they feel is, like you know. That. Yeah. So they feel safe. Stop right? and to, to, to protect you to go with you. So that's, that's <laughs> it's it's well, not something that happens often, though, thankfully. No, but you that's can be good. prepared to. And, and I know that people might go, well, yeah, but I feel like I'm making it up. Well, you, and you probably are. And that's the part of it, that it's okay yeah. that you're making it up because your mind is giving you the information along the way. So it's telling a story. So you are supposed to be creating that story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yes, it, it, there's, there's no right or wrong in this. What you see is what you see is what you see. It, it can be as surreal as you like. It's whatever the unconscious mind chooses to present to you. It knows what it means. Interestingly, again, that client I spoke to today, we spotted a little cottage and we, we, we allowed the, the fence to erode away. And then, you know, we, we looked at the, the path in front of her again and there were some trees there and it was a stone path. And so I asked her, I said, so what else would make this journey more inviting, more interesting, more encouraging, more motivating for you? What else do you need on this path? And she said, like a horse. I said, okay. Allow that horse to appear. I said, what colour is the horse? She said, it's white. I said, wow, white horse. I said, is it behind, beside you or are you riding the horse? Oh, I'm riding the horse. I said, how wonderful. How does that make you feel? Oh, great. Absolutely great. Now, I don't know what the metaphor for the horse was. You know, you know, it, I, I didn't ask. I don't need to know. But then whatever made her think of a horse, it's, who knows? But she now has a horse on her journey. And that's great. Well, and I, I remember in mine when we were doing it, I actually, sure. at one point, you asked me to look at something and I, I couldn't see it. It was like it was yeah. blocked out, like the sun was in my eyes type thing. And I, I couldn't really see it. And you walked me through that as well. So even if you do yeah. kind of get stumped. Yes, sometimes. So sometimes the unconscious you looked at, I think it was you looked at your past and, and, and you were blinded by the sunshine. And, and that's a very deliberate act of the unconscious. So the unconscious will use perhaps a fog or a mist. In your case, it was quite clever. It blinded you with a bright sunlight. And so it's sort of protecting you from something, right? So it, you've looked in that direction, in this case your past, and it's going, oh, okay, there's a couple of things there that maybe she doesn't need to see. So I'm just going to just blind her with light. Now, you can carefully, gently prod the unconscious mind to say, go on, look, just, you know, what? Are you willing to show me just even a little, 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 little peek in, into there? And I think we, we gave you a cap, didn't we? So you put a cap on it, and it, and it, it gave you... But interestingly, it didn't give you full clarity of vision. You were able to see a little bit more. And that's exactly how the, the, the unconscious mind works. You can't bully it. 
You can't say, right, we'll, we'll have a solar eclipse and you'll have instant clarity. No, it's good. All right, you want to say a little bit, but you know, I know better, right? I'm your unconscious. I know better and I'm going to, okay, you've asked me. Here's a little peek, but that's all you're getting. We can't bully the unconscious, right? It, it's way powerful than we are. So we can gently prod and say, just say a little bit. So how do you discern at that point as the person guiding them, whether that is a block or just a bit of protection? Yeah, so a, a block will be clear and obvious, like an Eiffel Tower, like a gate, a fence, whatever. But just protection is always vague. It's When you're looking forward in your, your mind map, you can see clearly. You can see the, all the structures and objects that have come out of the map very clearly, and that's fine. But, and that's because the unconscious is presenting them to you. But if you look and suddenly there's a fog or a mist or bright sunshine in your eyes, there's a reason for that, right? It's, it's not a block. It's a lack of clarity. It's, you, it's obscured. And so you know that it's, it's not a blockage. It's just something that's deliberately obscured. Oh, I can if, see the difference totally in what you're talking about. Yeah. So that makes and, and if the unconscious wanted you to see it, you would see it, right? But you can't, so that means something. It tells you something. Why can't I see this? Oh, okay. I'm well, not it, supposed right. to. It wasn't, it wasn't in my way. It was just, no. it was just something that was yeah. there. Yeah, it was your past. So just something in your past that really you didn't need to know about or you didn't need reminded of. And so at the end too, you had a, you did a fun little thing for me. You just like with the horse. I think mine was a, ba- a bike that I got to go on, make it easier for me. Yeah. But you left little presents for me. Yes. At the end. So, yeah. So what you can do is, you know, usually when we look at the horizon, which is your goal, you're, we, we, we lift you high up and again, we're lifting you high. We're lifting you towards the, the morality, the spirituality side of things, right? And so we're lifting you up to see the horizon, to see what your goal is. And just to make that journey more encouraging, more motivated to take that journey, I ask you just to, you know, take a lot of gifts and allow them just to fall onto the path. Let them fall. Indestructible gifts, right? They're brightly wrapped in little ribbons and they fall and scatter in various parts of the, the journey. And as you take the journey, you'll come across these things. You won't know what to what they are until you come across them. And just little bits of encouragement. And again, we're speaking that metaphoric language. So the unconscious will provide these little highlights, these little surprises, just to encourage you, to motivate you, to keep you going on that journey. And why not, right? We all like surprises. <laughs> and you do, do you kind of do that for everyone? Do you leave the little the little gift? Uh, yeah, I, I do it frequently, and why not? But sometimes, you know, the 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 path is so inviting. You know, the the client has cleared the path and added flowers along the way, and and various other things that they've got there, and they might have a horse, and they don't need these surprises. Their journey is just. They're so motivated, right? They're just, you can see it in their, the, the change in their physiology. The, I mean, the, their eyes are closed during this and there's no hypnosis in this. There's a little bit of relaxation at the start, but there's no actual hypnosis in this. But you can see them smiling. You can see the eagerness in their face. You can see their post, the change in posture as they now look at this journey ahead. You know, the sky is changed from grey to a clear blue sky and all these metaphoric changes. They're just ready and raring to go. You don't need, you clearly don't need all these extra gifts to encourage them. They are just, they've, they've decided they want a motorbike so they can just get there, you know. Oh, I didn't uh, think about that. I should have got a motorbike. <laughs> yeah. I'll trust my, my mind that it picked the right thing. So. It definitely did. Absolutely. So that's yeah. fun. I'm surprised it didn't pick a spaceship. It's my, my thing. <laughs> You just never know. That's so cool. And so you work with this. Do you work with people? Will you just do a Mindscape session with them? Or is that in conjunction to the other work you do? 
I I don't always do a mindscape. It's one of these, I guess, these uh, therapist instincts. You just kind of know that this person could do with a mindscape. With with the the client that I had uh, with the, the weight loss, I did the mindscape and I actually followed it up with the SWAN. Maybe we can discuss the SWAN at some point. But you know exactly what the SWAN protocol is. And this was perfect for the client. She wasn't a great hypnotic subject. And so I used these two things in conjunction. I cleared the path of her journey. So so the mind the mindscape requires no hypnosis. It requires a few moments of relaxation. It preempts the unconscious of what the goal is, what the subject of the mind map is. But there's no hypnosis. And then after the mind map, I so during the mind map we looked at the journey. We looked at the goal. We cleared the path for her. And so, because she wasn't a great hypnotic subject, I used the SWAN, which is again, it's a non-hypnotic protocol to allow the unconscious to make all the changes necessary for her diet to go smoothly. Okay? So the two in conjunction there, great, great pairing, ideal, fine. It's just one of these instinctive things. You know what? There is no harm in starting every client off with a mindscape. You set the scene, you clear the path, that's it. The the ground is laid quite literally for them to move forward. And then you can do all the therapy work that's necessary. But the path has been cleared. And it's found and it's instant, you know, you're making these changes and you're you're instantly the unconscious is in cooperation with these changes. And so that means that's it. The the wheels and cogs of you know the processing begin immediately, and the conscious sets to work. That's so awesome! I probably could sit here and talk to you for another hour about this, but <laughs> we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And I'd okay. love for you to share, Derek, how people can get in touch with you. And of course, that information will be in the show notes as well. But go ahead and let them know. Sure. Okay. So there's two ways you can get in touch with me. There's the website, my uh, which is www.cognitivecure.co.uk. And that's for my general hypnotherapy practice. That's where I cover just about everything. And there's also www. And I can't remember what it is now. It's, uh, well, that's goodness. a PTSD one, right? Is it? Yes. What is it? <laughs> it is. My goodness. See? You put me on a you put me on a podcast and I can't for the life of me remember what it is. It'll be in the notes. It'll be in the, you're also on catch, right? You're also on I'm catch. I'm on catch. I'm on catch. Don't yeah, worry about it. Sure. It's gonna be in the comments, not a problem. So <laughs> Uh, and, and yes, so, so the, the other website is purely for PTSD clients. So I, if you want to go there, then that's if you got PTSD and we know all about this, we've covered that in, in a previous podcast. Uh, that's that's where my my PTSD clients are yeah. directed to. Yeah, or they can go to the Catch PTSD and it'll direct they can, them. Yep, they can. Thank you so much for being here today for having this conversation with me. I think it's fascinating. I I think it was so easy, and I like you said, I think it would be a good thing for anyone to experience and just kind of go through because it's so easy to process and and just let the story be told and and it's kind of fun yeah it's kind of fun the clients love it and they always come out of going wow that was so interesting and you you don't need to do any work the the unconscious presents everything you need to know all right change gang there you go if you want to do mindscape get in touch and now i'm gonna have to go play with that too so who knows what i'll do with it but but have a great day i hope you have a great week and i hope that you meet me same time next week right here i hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun if so hey find someone to share it with maybe they need to hear it too or maybe they'll just enjoy it if you'd like go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success. Until next time, happy days.